have this 3D printed part. It's available on printables. And I used it to hold my two Makita wrenches in which the cobalt only comes with one wrench. The cobalt is a process of holding in the button and applying the one wrench. Uh, I'm gonna check and see if I can do a two wrench approach with the cobalt because I prefer that to holding in the button. So as soon as I have this remixed and printed and tested, I'll upload it. Um, let me go ahead and do some testing to see if I can use a two wrench approach in which I would be using the small wrench from the Makita plus this slightly larger wrench from Cobalt to do a two wrench approach instead of one wrench and holding in the button. These bristles, I had to super glue them in, but they're working great since I did. So I'm not sure if I twisted it beyond the flat place or what. Um, it, you know what? It grips a flat place, but it grips it with a ton of slop. So scratch that. Um, I'm going to need to measure how much that the width of that flat place is and try to manufacture a, a wrench for myself that allows me to do the two wrench approach because I prefer it. I'm endeavoring to measure the from flat to flat without removing the router from the mount. Okay, so after nudging my core over to get a little bit more room to finagle, I've measured a couple of times and I'm coming up with that the distance between the two flats is 11.83 millimeters. So based on that, I'd say it's probably made for a wrench that has a 12 millimeter gap. If I measure the small Makita, the span between that one is there about 13 and a half. So no wonder, no wonder this one uh, wanders off of the flats and gets itself trapped on the threads. So I may fire up, let me see how thick this steel is. So that is, that is three millimeter thick steel. I may see if I can fire up my plasma cutter. You know what, I have, I have some steel that's close to this. I'm gonna see if I can manufacture my own wrench that fits um, the distance. And, uh, and if I do that and it works and anybody else wants one, I'll see if I can uh, make enough of them to have a few extra to sell. I snapped a photo of the cobalt wrench, ran a bitmap trace, and then used CorelDRAW to tweak the vectors to create a secondary wrench. Okay, so those of you who follow my channel know that a few months back I made another Lowrider version 3 do-it-yourself CNC machine, mostly printed CNC machine, just for the purpose of strapping a plasma cutter to it instead of a router. So that meant I needed to build a water table with slats. And it just so happens that the steel that I ordered for the slats uh, was too long. And so I have these cut off pieces. And they just happen to be the same thickness as the metal used for the wrenches for the new cobalt router. And I know that this is, uh, I think, I want to say cold rolled steel. It's not tool steel. And I don't, uh, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know if the amount of stress applied to a wrench in this instance is enough to warrant it having to be tool steel. But I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of um, wrenches out of one of these planks. Uh, I jokingly was going to tease that I could cut out this paper template, glue it on here, and then cut it out only to pause and say, I wonder if I know somebody who has a CNC plasma machine and then, oh, I do. 
So, but um, I, I created these vectors. I basically, first I photographed this and then created vectors for this one. This one is a 17 millimeter span and what is needed for the secondary wrench is a 12 millimeter span. And this is the Makita secondary smaller wrench and its span is larger than 12 millimeter. But if I lay them side by side, you can see that I've got my sizing pretty close. And of course, um, this is the, the business end is set to the 12 millimeter span that I need. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and fire up my Lowrider 3 CNC plasma cutter and see if I can get it honed in, honed in enough to cut two of these out. And if anybody else like me likes to do the two wrench method as opposed to holding that button in and doing a one wrench method, then uh, I may be able to make some more of these available and uh, hopefully for as reasonable a price as, as I can do. And uh, just let me know in the comments or fire off, fire off an email to me at Doug at design8studio.com and uh, I'll try to help you on that. Let's see if we can do this and see how well it works. Okay, so I back down from 50 and it's down to 45. I set my pierce delay to zero and I changed the feed rate, the cut feed rate from 2000 to 2500. Let's save that. Let's do a test cycle. Put my mask on and try again. We have a wrench. Thank you, Lowrider. Do it yourself CNC from V1 Engineering with a plasma cutter strapped to it instead of a router. This is three millimeter thick cold rolled steel. I'm going to give it a try on the cobalt router as a secondary wrench to do the two wrench method instead of the one wrench method. Okay, so uh, please forgive me, but I knocked the slag off with a chisel off camera uh, if you've ever seen any one of a million videos where the little bit of slag that's left on the edge is knocked off with a chisel that's that's all I did uh, so the lead-in happened here and there's just a little bit of a mismatch uh, between the lead-in and the lead-out uh, that little bit of mismatch can happen and it's why you don't want your lead-in positioned in a crucial place where you really are focused on dimensionality so I deliberately put my lead in over here I got a little bit of a uh, pyro nub right there I'll knock that off with a grinder another little bit of one there uh, all in all I'm really pleased with that cut line and I need to get my calipers and check and see how close I am to the targeted millimeters. My cut line is a little bit of a wedge, which I think indicates that I either didn't have enough power or was moving too fast or both. So I may need to cut this again, but I may just fix that right in this area here with a file. All 
All right, at the top of the wedge, I want you to look at that. I'm dead on. At the top of the wedge, I'm dead on the, the 12 millimeter that I wanted. At the bottom, I'm off by about two tenths of a millimeter. And that's because of that slight angle I was mentioning. So that's close enough that I think I'm just gonna try to clean that up with a file and call that good. All right, one twelve millimeter wrench for use with cobalt. Now I'll just go test it and see how it works. So just for comparison, that's the original cobalt wrench, seventeen millimeter span, three millimeter thick steel, and this is the one that I just cut using my low rider three that has a plasma torch strapped to it. I'll put a link in the description to that plasma torch. It's a Hynide Cut 60 DN, which comes with a non high frequency uh, start so that you have less chance of interference. And it's got some nice features that make it suited for use with CNC. But there they are side by side. And now I will try the two wrench method that I like that uh, doesn't have me have to squeeze that button. There we go. All right, that was loosening. Let's try tightening. And that's tightening. It's a tight fit in there, which is one reason why I manufactured this as opposed to trying to just find an existing 12 millimeter because any existing 12 millimeter that I would find would be made out of thicker metal and it wouldn't fit in that tight, narrow space up there. 
So it's looking like this is working for me. Uh, if anybody else is interested in one, let me know and I'll see if I can figure out how cheaply I can make one for you. Or you could just build your own plasma rig with a low rider CNC so you can do that kind of stuff too. Here I'm going to remove the nylock nut from the old in the capture slot so that I can insert it into the new. I do this by first running a screw down into it and after I pulled on it a while and it was in there really, really good, I actually drove the screw on through and then uh, pounded on it from the backside with a hammer, finally got it to dislodge a little bit. And then similarly, I use a screw to uh, get the nut inserted into the new part, not only for leverage, but also to know that I've got it positioned uh, properly so that it will not cross thread. Also, I recorded video of my entire Fusion 360 prep for that plasma cut. And in case you've wondered how to do that, I'll make that available as a separate video. And it definitely will help you and in fact serves as a reminder for me. This is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.